Good evening. Thank all of you for being here today. Today is November the 7th, 2023. Our thought for today is silence is foolish if we are wise, but wise if we are foolish. That's Charles C. Cloton. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and officially call this meeting to order tonight. I'm gonna ask um, um, Commissioner Mason if you would lead us in our invocation and I'm gonna ask uh, Commissioner Cowan if you would lead us in our pledge, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let us all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us back to this place one more time. We thank you for all that you've done for this county and all that you're about to do. Uh, we thank you for uh, allowing each and every one of us to serve in this leadership capacity. God, we ask that you continue to give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to be able to help take this community to the next level. God, I even ask that you bless those uh, that are in this community, uh, every resident, uh, God, give them everything that they need, God, and we just ask that as we even move into this particular meeting, God, that you would give us uh, the, the sound uh, decisions to be able to make uh, the best judgment and the best decisions for this community so that it can be all that you have called it to be, and we'll be forever grateful and thankful, and we give you all the kingdom, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, next on the agenda, the agenda is an adoption. I seek a motion that we approve the agenda, please. So moved. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? All in favor? This passes 5-0. Thank you so much. Next is citizen comments. This is an opportunity that we allow citizens to make comments about agenda topics only. Agenda topics only, you have three minutes to do so. If you would like to, you could please come now and state your name and your address for the record, please. Agenda topics only. Thank you. Um, next is the chairman's report. Today we have um, some special people with us today. Um, November is National Adoption Month for, um, is a recognition of a National Adoption Month. Um, and we do have with us Ms. Uh, Ms. Wooden, if you would please, ma'am, come on up. Um, Ms. Wooden is the Newton County Director, Division of Family and Children Services, Georgia Department of Human Services. You can bring your team if you want, would like. Yeah, if you would please come on up. <clears throat> Welcome tonight. We do have a proclamation that we want to read into the minutes, please, Ms. Hamp. Good evening, everyone, Ms. Wooden and team. National Adoption Day. Whereas families have always stood at the center of our society, preserving good and worthy traditions from our past and entrusting those traditions to our children, our greatest hope for the future, at a time when many fear that the family is in decline, it is fitting that we give special recognition to those who are rebuilding families by promoting adoption. And whereas Newton County recognizes the critical importance of helping children find permanent, safe, and loving families through adoption. In Georgia, there are more than 11,100 children in foster care system. Nationwide, there are more than 123,000 foster children waiting for their forever families. And whereas November is recognized as National Adoption Awareness Month, while all adoption-related issues are important, the focus of this month is the adoption of children currently in foster care. And adoption provides a child with a lifelong positive connection, one of life's greatest gifts. And whereas the month also includes National Adoption Day, traditionally a Saturday which is observed in courthouses across the nation, 
where thousands of adoptions are finalized simultaneously and whereas adoption provides a unique experience that positively impacts children and enriches the lives of adopted families. Last but not least, let us pay tribute to those special families who have opened their homes and their hearts to adopted children, forming bonds that we call family now. Therefore, I, Chairman Marcelo Baines of the Newton County Board of Commissioners, by the authority vested in me by the laws of Newton County, Georgia, do hereby proclaim November as National Adoption Month. In doing so, we urge all citizens in the national effort to raise awareness of the importance of adoption for foster children and all children needing safe, loving families presented this seventh day of November, 2023. Again, thank you for being here. Um, you know, the role that you guys play is so valuable um, in so many different lives y'all have affected. You want to talk just a little bit about what you do and, and. Uh, sure. So <laughs> for um, adoption, month, so like for Newton County specifically, um, we have 10 children that are on, on, on adoption status. Um, we have one child that will finalize his adoption this month. Um, so far this year, we have um, finalized adoption for three children. Um, an adoption is not necessarily just an adoption between like a foster parent. Sometimes um, grandparents adopt, relatives yeah. adopt. Um, we focus a lot on trying to keep families together. So we do a lot of kinships where we, um, a child is removed, you know, like from a parent. However, we, we, we always seek family first in, in placing kids. And so um, it is always very, very critical um, when we seek permanency for children and finding permanency in those forever homes. Um, and we don't stop. And so like for adoption, it doesn't stop because a <coughs> child has reached age 16, 17, like as long as they're in our custody, we're seeking that permanency for them. Um, when you think of older kids, even though they are not like the little kids, a lot of times people say they want to adopt babies and things of that nature, but our teens, our older kids need to be connected to families. And so even if they decide to go off to college, we want them to have someone in their lives that they're coming back to um, for holidays, um, being a part of their life. And so. Um, it's always an emotional time um, when we do find that permanency for kids because our kids experience a lot of trauma um, and having that forever family, those are things that we take for granted, right? We take our cousins and the distant family and all that stuff for granted. With these kids, they, they don't. It means a lot. And so um, we're grateful and we appreciate you all for acknowledging this tonight um, as we continue to work to try to find permanency for children. Thank you. Well, let me just say, uh, we, this board, and uh, we um, appreciate what you guys do um, to bring some type of comfort to those in those in the, that, that difficult time. And we do want to um, come and present this proclamation, but I want to get to bring the whole board and we do all a group picture with you guys. do have another proclamation that we want to make sure we read into um, um, the minutes, uh, Ms. Hamm. We have our proclamation resolution supporting Operation Greenlight for our veterans. 
whereas the residents of Newton County have great respect, admiration, and the utmost gratitude for all the men and women who have selflessly served our country and this community in the armed forces, and whereas the contributions and sacrifices of those who served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and way of life enjoyed by our citizens, and whereas Newton County seeks to honor individuals who have made countless sacrifices for freedom by placing themselves in harm's way for the good of all, and whereas veterans continue to serve our community in the American Legion, veterans of foreign wars, religious groups, civil service, and by functioning as county veteran service officers in 29 states to help fellow former service members access more than 52 billion in federal health, disability, and compensation benefits each year whereas approximately 200,000 service members transition to civilian communities annually, and whereas an estimated 20% increase of service members will transition to civilian life in the near future, whereas studies indicate that 44 to 72% of service members experience high levels of stress during transition from military to civilian life, and whereas active military service members transitioning from military service are at a high risk for suicide during their first year after military service, and whereas the National Association of Counties encourages all counties, parishes, and boroughs to recognize Operation Greenlight for veterans, and whereas the Newton County, whereas Newton County appreciates the sacrifices of our United States military personnel and believes specific recognition should be granted. Therefore, be it resolved with designation as a green light for veterans county, Newton County hereby declares from October <clears throat> through Veterans Day, November 11th, a time to salute and honor the service and sacrifices of our men and women in uniform transitioning from active service, and therefore be it further resolved that in observance of Operation Greenlight, Newton County encourages its citizens in patriotic transition to recognize the importance of honoring all those who made immeasurable sacrifices to preserve freedom by displaying green lights in a window of their place of business <clears throat> or residence from November 6th through the 12th of 2023. Signed this day also by our chairman, Marcelo Baines, November 7th, 2023. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, we also will we'll be uh, lighting up the, the um, administration building with green lights um, in recognition of that. Do we have any veterans here tonight? If you would, please stand and come down to the front. We just, there you go, there you go. There you go. If you, yeah, if you would, come down to the front. We're gonna get a quick picture with you guys as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next on the agenda, we, um, the, in the chairman's report, we want to bring a couple of different people up to you tonight and let them give a quick update on, um, on some of the funds that they received from the county from ARPA funds. Um, I think first we got Ms. Uh, B. Jackson 
if you would please come on up we're watching this great you and your team thank you guys for being here tonight <clears throat> we had an op we had an opportunity to go and visit miss uh, miss Jackson at um, at their location at Washington Street and saw, saw some of the things that they was doing and they are doing some amazing things. You want to take a quick second? I see y'all tag team tonight. Yeah, okay. we are. Uh, all right, that's okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And I have along with me tonight the director of the Taylor Made Foundation, okay. Ms. Darnell Taylor. Thank Our you. new friends at Washington Street Community <laughs> Center. <laughs> good evening, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, commissioners. Uh, we're happy to report that all is well at Washington Street Community Center, and we want to thank you for the opportunity to update, update this board on our WSCC progress and on update of use of the ARPA funds. On behalf of our board of directors, staff, students, parents, and volunteers, we thank you for making funds available to help us carry on this important work of preparing our young people for a better future. Opera funds have helped us to fill the gap in funding for our summer and regular after school program. We've purchased t-shirts for our summer enrichment programs as well as our regular after school program. It's important for us to look alike when we go out and we like to take our children out often. So it's important that we all look alike. We're a pretty large group, so we wanna be able to recognize our children uh, beyond any other kids that may be out there so that we make sure that we return with the same number of kids that we took with us. <laughs> also, our aqua funds have been used to help purchase incentives for reading such as bean bags and uh, chairs, swivel chairs, so that kids can have a relaxed and informal way of how they can begin to appreciate that reading is important. We've also used, used the monies to purchase additional laptops so that every student in our center has access to one while they are there for their use. Some of the funds are used for IT services, such as for our internet to continue to work properly, as well as for our voice lines. And lastly, ARCA funds are used to pay for our janitorial <coughs> services. To date, we still average a 37 student average, daily average of our students. We're doing a number of activities that include not only homework help, but all other types of enrichment activities. We focus on intervention skills and strategies to help our children succeed. We mix that all up with a lot of enrichment and cultural activities for our children's children to experience. But overall, we will continue to operate this program with the utmost integrity for Washington Street. Thank you for inviting us tonight. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Baines and Good Commissioners. Evening. Thank you so much for allowing me to present to you this evening. Um, and thank you, Ms. B, also for partnering with the Taylor May Foundation. We operate now out of the Washington Street Community Center as the teen resource, providing education in different services to our teens. We're really a college prep program, but for teens, you can't market it to them as college prep. You know, when they're younger, they're not really overly concerned with college. So we're like, hey, you know, come on and hang out with us here. So we um, provide financial literacy workshops to the teens. We provide health and wellness classes to the teens, as well as STEM. Um, career readiness <coughs> courses and also college prep. So we're paying for the college applications. We're helping them to figure out what colleges they may want to go to, figure out their majors, and we'll also be going on college tours. Um, so we've been in operation, the, the Tell Me Foundation has been in operation since 2018. We've operated our program, the TaylorMade University, for the past two years now. Um, the ARPA funding has helped to provide, um, take the children on field trips. Over the summer, we took the children to Generate Tech where they were able to um, build video games. A lot of them are into gaming and computers um, and video games as well. So um, we took them to Generate Tech. 
and also we were able to take them to a field trip to the FBI Atlanta headquarters where they were introduced to different career paths that they could have taken um, at the um, with the FBI if um, you know if they're interested we um, also paid for salaries for program coordinators for the program supplies every student got a laptop this year we have 20 students in the program each student got a laptop we provide t-shirts just as well we provide meals and snacks and we wanted to sincerely thank you all for the opportunity because this would not have been possible without your help so we're grateful to you thank you so much thank you so much We just want to say thank you for the excellent work that you guys are doing. Thank you for sowing into the youth. And um, again, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I think that's all I have for the chairman's report. Mr. Cooper, I'm going to turn it over to you for the county manager report, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, distinguished board members, citizens. Uh, I think that's a great segue. I want to extend another special thank you to Ms. Wooden, Ms. Jackson, and Ms. Taylor for all that you do. Uh, you understand the importance of people, uh, <clears throat> our young people in you all's case. You understand the importance of purpose, uh, the optimum service delivery that you're providing. And you also understand the importance of effective strategies, processes, right? And today, we're going to talk about processes and programs in relationship to ARPA. We're going to give updates on the Newton County Low Income Senior Home Repair Program, the Newton County Nonprofit Assistance Program, and the Newton County Small Business Program. Just as a refresher, with the Newton County Low Income Senior Home Repair the eligibility requirements are simple. First and foremost, you have to be a resident here in Newton County. You have to be 55 years or older or someone in that household 55 years or older to be eligible. And that home has to be your primary residency. In addition to that, you must meet the AMI threshold, which is the area of median income where you have to be at or below 80% of that pursuant to uh, housing and the urban development secretary, secretary of HUD, commonly called. Please note though, and this is where some of the frustration may lie, that anybody that's at or 50% below the AMI will receive precedent over others. Because let's say our AMI here in Newton County is roughly 65,000. That means anybody that's at that 50% threshold, and it could be a family of one or a family of five, has an annual income of $32,500. So they should take precedent because with uh, inflation going up 3.7% uh, since 2022, as of September of 2023, fixed income, meager wages takes priority. A town hall was held on August 9th to discuss these different issues and factors as it pertains to the Newton County Low Income Senior Home Repair Program. And I asked then, and I'm gonna to ask today, I want helpers opposed to hecklers, right? I want people who are gonna quell the situation instead of gaslighting the situation. Because again, this is uncharted waters for all of us and it's a new process, but failure never, setbacks every now and then because failure has been eradicated from my vocabulary. Let's talk about the Board of Commissioners. I want to thank this board, just like uh, the fine people that stood before us just now and understanding the need <coughs> of this uh, program. Uh, $5, $5 million, excuse me, was allocated. 133 recipients thus far have received approvals and 2.5 million have been awarded. And we've dispersed a little bit over $1.28 million at this particular time. Considerations. I kind of talked about some of the considerations. Currently there are still 854 applicants in the queue. 
uh, some of the issues that some of our seniors may have been experiencing is the email communication. And that may be twofold. That may be us as well as them. But one of the things that we found that's been startling of recent is that a lot of the emails have gone to their spam. So we have a process in place now to assist those seniors who may not be uh, techno technologically sound uh, in terms of giving them that additional support. Uh, also, in terms of the documentation, there may be some documentation that is missing, i.e. photographs, quotes, things of that nature. And in terms from a vendor perspective and your disbursements, there has to be constant lines of communications between the vendors and iParametrics, and that's twofold. Considerations, again, the 50% threshold will take precedent. Also, the qualified census tracts will take precedent as well, because if we have a community that there is a, a group of individuals in that community that meets, that are below or at that 50% threshold, but is not more than 20% of the entire population of this county, we have to look at that community and that segment of that community to make sure that we get their applications pushed forward as well. Newton Family Connection has been a great asset in reference to that. Uh, Ms. Laura Bertram, they've been going around of recent and doing uh, some one-on-ones with our seniors to ensure uh, that we get them processed and get them processed timely. We deal in what's real here. So when there's problems, we want to bring about plausible solutions. But we also, too, want to tell the citizen stories. And here we have two testimonials, one from District 1, the other from District 4. Uh, and I'll start with District 1, dated September 29, 2023. Please be advised that our HVAC system will be installed on October 11, 2023. Please advise how I go about scheduling the final inspection for this project. Or is this something that the HVAC company will do? The electrical project has already been completed and inspected. Thank you for the blessing of this awesome gift. You will never know how much you have helped us by approving the grant for these projects. Our lives will be forever changed for the better. May the blessings come back to you tenfold. We are so grateful and thankful. Words just can't describe how we feel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's District 1. District 4. Hello. The roof has been redone and looks beautiful. The hole in the siding has been repaired and also looks great. I am told that they will work on getting the gutter taken care of early next week. I will be out of town and away from my computer next Tuesday through Thursday. Please know that I am terribly grateful to have all of this done. It is an enormous weight off my shoulders. So those type of testimonials keep us going in spite of all the trials and tribulations that we may <clears throat> have with this program. Newton County Nonprofit Assistance Program. The Board of Commissioners approved just under $554,000. The allotment has been exhausted. 25 organizations was helped through this program. So that means 25 out of the 40 applicants received funding as a result of this program, which is 62% of those programs. And when we drill down by district, 60% of the applicants from District 1 were approved, 40% of the applicants from District 2 were approved, 100% of the applicants from District 3 were approved, 56% of the applicants from District 4 were approved, and 70% of the applicants from District 5 were approved. Again, this overall process known as ARPA is a work in progress, but we're working diligently. Newton County Small Business Grants. The Board of Commissioners approved one million in grant funding. The Finance Department has allocated just under $456,000. 
32 organizations so far have been assisted by this grant. When we drill down and look at the numbers here, that means 40% of the 79 applicants have been approved for assistance through this program. And when we drill down by district, 22% of the applicants in District 1 were approved. 54% of the applicants in District 2 <coughs> were approved. 50% of the applicants in District 3 were approved. 39% of the applicants in District 4 were approved. And 37% of the applicants in District 5 were approved. So when you look at the numbers in their totality here, I've read off 133 as a number when it comes to senior home repairs. I've read off a number of 25 when it comes to the nonprofit grant program. And I've just read off a number of 32 organizations when it comes to the small business grant program. So what does that mean? That means that 190 people entities or programs have been positively impacted by the ARPA funding. And again, I can't thank this board enough and I can't thank the applicants enough for doing their due diligence and applying. Now, has everything in this programming been a success? No, but again, failure's been eradicated from my vocabulary. We will continue to push forward. And last but not least, it's getting cold out there. Warming shelters have been a hot button topic of late. I know that we had warming shelters last year. So I've been in discussion because working together works and if we're truly gonna be one Newton, there needs to be consensus building. I've been talking with the different municipalities, the city of Covington, as well as the Board of Education to see what we're gonna do about warming shelters. And that was a typo on our part. We said the coming months, we're looking at the coming days. We're gonna be aggressive in this approach so that we can work together from a municipality standpoint and a board of education standpoint to find shelter for those that need it during these trying and cold times. This is my county manager's report. I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Henderson. Thank you, Ms. C. Uh, this could be, I guess the question I want to ask, um, I think um, at one point, Ms. Kennedy told us, gave us a certain amount of money that she was working for. So how much, as of to date, have we paid Ms. Kennedy and or others out of the uh, author funding? I don't have that number available for you at this particular time. And unfortunately, Ms. White went home ill, but I can get you that information, sir. Okay, the reason why I asked, I think, last time we, we were discussed in the board, it was something like a half a million dollars or a little more, possibly a, uh, a little less. I think I had, I don't know about the other commission, but I had wanted a, um, uh, those projects, I guess, per district, uh, I guess a list of those projects. And, uh, and I guess this is to Patrick, dude. Is it a secret if somebody in district four of them giving me an address or any addresses that the um, person probably has been fixed or helped. Is there a legal issue on that of any sort? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand your question. In other words, if, if I want a list, I want Mr. Cooper to give me a list of all the app, applicant, applicants, and he gave me a spreadsheet, and I want the addresses. So if I want to go physically and see the work that has been done, then I should be able to go and see it. That, that information can be provided. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sanders. That was a, a part of my question. I already did open records to Brittany, and she's supposed to be giving that <coughs> detailed list to me, so I'll, I'll share that with the board once I receive that. And my question was, why is it not on the actual transparency site? Because with that being ARPA funds and public funding federal dollars, that's public records. So our strategic plan, one of our components is transparency. So the list of the businesses, the nonprofits, the small businesses, and those who receive funding should be listed, as well as the contractors that actually receive the funding. That should be on our website. So we are aware, the residents are aware that we are doing right by these dollars, and they can see the transparency list. But I did already do an open records, and I will share that with my colleagues once I receive that document. Brittany did acknowledge 
that she received and supposed to be sending that document to me, but it should be on the county website. Thank you. Ms. Hale. Well, you know what, let me do this consent, let me do this consent agenda. Um, thank you, sir, for your report. Um, next is the consent agenda. I seek a motion that we approve, please. So moved. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? All in favor? Passes 5 0. Ms. Hamm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next item on the agenda are items for discussion and consideration. The next item is number 10 presentation of phase one of the Community Water Park project. This project is funded by 2023 SPLOST. We have uh, Mr. Dwayne Mask, as well as Mr. Jeff Prine, our Director of Parks and Recre Recreation, as well as Project Manager. Hey, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. sir. How you doing? I'm good. So I need, uh, I need to apologize, because I was, I was supposed to have gotten with Miss Susan Miss Jackie about pulling this or tabling it till later because we didn't quite have everything together to bring tonight. Okay. So um, we need to table it and we'll have it back probably the first of the year um, to present to the board phase one of the water park. Okay. So um, like I said, that, that's, that's my fault. Jeff had asked me to reach out and it just, I just slipped my mind. Thank so. you, sir. Can I get a motion to table this, please? So moved. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner. Um, Mason and second by Commissioner um, Edwards. Any discussion? Commissioner Henderson. Thank you. Uh, and he's not, <laughs> the way he's not, I'm not uh, talking about you, direct <laughs> at you. I just want to make sure that um, the people know that this is in District 4 and that we have had a, 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 a just a big discussion, especially with Mr. Turner, the Turner family, donation of six acres. And, and I think uh, Commissioner Cowan, he was so excited uh, months ago, he told me, he said, they're going to donate you six acres over there and so at the water park. And I think, um, and just to recap a little bit, I think it's about 19 million and it's going to be done in phases, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. And it's going to mean a whole lot to, to that community. And it's in the best spot, it's in town. And uh, we're very excited about it, and so is the community. Thank you. Thank Commissioner you. Sanders. Um, my request is when they come back the first of the year, we can bring all of these splash projects so we can know where we are. Because I know for me, I get asked all the time by constituents what's happening with the youth facility, what's happening with uh, District 3 Park, and we're kind of like at a standstill. So if we can okay. get updates on all the projects at that time, because the 2017 splash, we're in 2023. We right. need to be moving for and I know that's not you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we, but we we can do that. So and then we were the plans are being drawn for the water park. There's just some things that we're still working out. So when we do bring it before y'all, we'll have everything okay. ready. But yes, I'll get with that. Thank you, Dwayne. While you're here, can you take three minutes? Three and minutes. Just give me give us a quick overview of your trip with um, sure. um, the Miracle League and yeah. and all of that, if you don't mind. Yeah. So this past weekend we. Um, went down to um, West Palm Beach and spent the weekend with the Miracle League with Palm Beach of, uh, uh, and, and kind of watched how they done things um, and had the official, I guess they, they, they give out bats, so they handed over the official bat to us, which means we are 11 months away from hosting that event. There was probably, there was 125 kids from all over the country that Let's came down. We're 11 months away from what now? We're, we're 11 months away from hosting that event. Yeah. And um, that will start out uh, Friday night, October the 4th, and we'll go through Sunday. And uh, we'll have about 125 participants come in that Friday night and uh, families, and uh, we will host them uh, Friday night. We'll do a meet and greet. We'll feed them, um, have some activities. Saturday, we'll play ball most of the day. Um, Saturday night, we'll have a nice banquet for the players and their families, and um, and we're, we're excited. Got a lot of work to do, but we've got a good head start. But um, we're going to need plenty of help. So anyone would like to volunteer, please give us a call, and we will definitely put you down. But uh, it was a great weekend. Um, we can't quite compete with Palm Beach, but um, Newton County will do a good job. I promise you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
we got a motion and second. Can we um, can we get that vote, please? All in favor? Thank you. And stand table. Mr. Chair, we are at number eleven. The presenter will be Ms. Veronica Hardy, the Assistant Chief Appraiser. Tax Assessor's Office is requesting the approval of Wolpert Inc. doing business as Data Cloud Solutions contract for appraisal technology integration. This is the only software that integrates with WinGap, which is the software that is used by the Tax Assessor's Office. Um, it's not time sensitive, but it is budgeted not to exceed $32,834. Good evening. Hey, guys. This isn't Marty. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> she is not here. Uh, of course, we usually work together. This is Quint Bruno. Most of you guys know him. Of course, I'm Veronica Hardy from the tax assessor's office. These may not be necessary, but I did want you guys to have a copy so that you could see basically what we are definitely requesting this program for and how it would benefit us. Um, I'm here to request the approval of a highly beneficial program for our office. By law, we are charged with the task to oversee that appropriate and uniform appraisals of all taxable property within the county are being conducted. Of course, every person in this room, not just you guys, um, knows that the growth rate for Newton County is steadily increasing. Um, with the staff that we have, we can no longer really keep up with the state goal of inspecting all these properties every three years. For years, we've made do with outdated and insufficient means. Uh, the guys, Quint and all the other guys that y'all have met, they take a clipboard and they take a pencil and they go out in the field in the truck and they sketch and they come back in and they input the data and we're printing you know, permits doing all this. What this program will do will allow them to have an iPad, if you will, to take out in the field. That one thing alone, there's a list of things and what's in the packet that Quint gave to y'all show the things on there. But them going out is gonna cut really like a half a day right there. That gives them an extra day basically out in the field per day. The appraisals will be able to spend more time out in the field. Uh, there are so many features to this that is just blowing our mind. Touch screen sketching, um, live field tracking. So we'll be able to keep up with where each appraiser is. Marty and I will be able to assign things and kind of see the different subdivisions and neighborhoods, houses that have not been picked up. Things like even when we go to the Board of Equalization meetings, when we don't have like proper sketching and the equipment to look up things, this program allows that. Um, productivity dashboards, reports, that list. I mean, even the things like on the second and third sheet just kind of tell you what all is involved. But the main thing that you guys are familiar with is the fact that they're going out in the field each day and then they're coming back in and putting that data in. This will actually almost nip that part in the bud. We need more people because we've got more growth. This thing definitely is going to help us out. We are excited Thank to you. have something like that. Thank you um, much. So I guess to kind of sum it up, it will save time, save money, and definitely increase productivity. Do Thank you guys have any questions? Thank you so much. Guys, I'll seek a motion, please. Can I get, yep. Can I get a second? Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards and second by Commissioner Mason. In any discussion, Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, thank you for this presentation. I'm, I'm a firm believer in technology and mm -hmm. what it can do for us, and especially in terms of consistency and, and uniformity mm -hmm. um, in the field with you guys. We get a lot of calls in the spring, just like you do. So um, I, I guess my, my big question would be uh, the, the, the data dashboard you talked about. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's going to be available to the public that can go in and pull the data it was, would, would this program or this application allow the public, are you going to give public access on a website so they can go in and pull reports for themselves? The public access is through QPublic, which yeah. this program connects, and that's why we don't have any additional uh, bids for this, because this was the only program that connected to the in-house system that we use WinGap right now. But QPublic, the information that's available there will be more updated and more accurate based on this program. Okay. So they, the public won't have access to the iPad information that's right in front of us, but it will update it on the Q Public website, which will make that more accessible for the public to use. Okay. So thank you, question. thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone else? All in favor? 
And Pastor Fabo, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, the next item on the agenda is item number 12. We have Ms. Margaret Smith, the account manager from the <coughs> Newton County Tax Commissioner's Office that is presenting. She's, there is a request to waive penalties and interest by a business owner. I'm requesting that the board approve to waive all penalties and interest for years 2019 and 2020 back taxes. But Ms. Margaret Smith will elaborate. Good evening. Good evening. How are y'all doing today? Great. Um, how are you? So Mr. Patel unfortunately wasn't here to um, state his case, but he came in to pay his delinquent taxes and he did pay them in full. However, he was requesting that we waive the um, penalties and interest, which are a little over 20,000. Um, and we denied that, so we wanted to see if you would also support us in that tonight. There was no evidence of any type of hardship or any reason to waive these fees. Thank you. Uh, board, I seek a motion, please. In, to, to, uh, you can waive it or either, I can't tell you how to make the motion. I can't do that, but either way you want to state the motion. Either you are, you are in favor of waiving it or you're not in favor of waiving it, but the chair can't assist you in that. Commissioner Cowell. I'll make a motion not to waive any penalties or interest on this uh, tax bill. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, ma'am. It's been motioned by Commissioner um, Cowell and second by Commissioner Sanders. Any discussion? All in, uh, um, Commissioner Edwards, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One question. Did you say this was a commercial? This it is, is a commercial. It is commercial? All right. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. It passes well. Okay, thank you. Real. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next item on the agenda is item number 13. We have presenter Ms. Amanda Shoemaker, who will also be assisted by County Manager Mr. Harold Cooper, as well as Mr. Gary Massey. There's a request for a Board of Commissioners approval of Gary Massey Agency Incorporated consultant contract in the amount of 25,000. Um, cost 25,000, funding sources general, and no additional match is required. Good evening. Hello, hello everyone. At the request of the Board of Commissioners, the county posted an RFP seeking the services of an insurance consultant. From that process, one vendor was selected. And as such, um, the county is seeking approval to extend a contract to the Gary Massey Agency Incorporated in the amount of $25,000 for um, insurance consultant services. Thank you. I seek a motion, please. Is there a second? Thank you. It's been motioned by Commissioner Henderson and second by Commissioner Cowan. Any discussion? Commissioner Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What took us so long? <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Any more discussion? All in favor? It passes 5 0. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, the next item we have is item number 14 being presented by Mr. Chester Clegg, Transportation Director. Public Works is requesting the Board of Commissioners approval to contract with Nova Engineering and Environmental LLC for construction materials, testing, and inspection services for the intersection improvements at Crawl Road and Harold Dobbs Road project. It is time sensitive. Um, cost is $14,350, and the fun funding source would be our 2023 SPLOST. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we are proceeding with the um, Harold Dobbs project at um, Harold Dobbs Road and Crawl Road, and we need uh, materials inspections uh, and testing. Um, Nova was the, the, the cheapest, and um, I'm requesting they be approved. Thank you, sir. I seek a motion, please. Is there a second? Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner um, Sanders and I think Commissioner Henderson got you on that. It's been motioned by Commissioner Sanders and second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? Um, Commissioner Sanders. Have we had any updates on the sidewalks on Fairview Road in regards to GDOT? We are. Um, Procuring the, the engineering services now for that, so that we're in the process of that, and okay. 
will be have it okay. replaced by the first of the year. Thank you. All in favor? It passed in five votes. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair, we're at item number 15, consideration of request to relocate sewer easement to Liberty Communities LLC to serve Liberty Common Subdivision and authorization to execute associated documents. And it appears that our county attorney, Mr. Patrick Jockstetter, will be doing that presentation. Good evening, Chair and Board. Um, back in 2018, the Board of Commissioners approved an easement over a very small portion of the property outlined in blue above to allow the installation of a sewer line. The um, property you see outlined in blue is a very large property. If you'd scroll to the next page, if you would, please. Um, this puts it in a little more context. Now the property you see in blue is what will be a new phase of Riverwalk subdivision. It's not shown on this, but if you followed that road labeled Ibis Lane down and it would veer off to the left, it will join in with Deering Road a little bit south of that, and that's Riverwalk subdivision. The new phase of Riverwalk, Riverwalk subdivision is the bit you see that sort of looks undeveloped. Scroll to the next page if you would, please. And these are the easement areas. The easement area on the left, the red circle on the left, is an easement, it's about 20 feet by 20 feet that was granted from the county to the real estate developer back in 2018. What that easement does is allow the installation of about 20 foot of sewer line to, to tie into the sewer line, if you scroll to the top of that page. There's a sewer line that runs east-west along that larger piece of property that the, that the county owns. There's a sewer station off to the right of the screen. It turns out that that red circle on the left is sitting over a pond. The developer wisely does not want to go into the pond to install a sewer line, and the developer in this instance has proposed to return to the county the easement area on the left, and in exchange receive a new easement for that area on the right, which again is about 20 feet by 20 feet, um, and that will allow a sewer sewer line to be installed on that little area that's drawn in the red circle to tie into the main sewer line to the north. That is the request coming from the real estate developer. There would be no money changing hands back in 2018. The original easement was granted. So we're going to give up, we're going to receive back an easement, grant a new easement if the board approves it. Seek a motion, please. I think this is District 5, I think. I think that's right. I make a motion to approve the uh, request to uh, terminate the prior easement and allow for the creation of a new easement. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion by Commissioner Cowell and a second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? All in favor? It passes 5-0. Mr. Chair, we're at item number 16, resolution RO110723, a resolution to authorize the chairman to execute closing documents necessary to consummate sale of real property authorized by third amendment to real estate purchase agreement between the city of Covington and Newton Investments. And Mr. Jogstetter will also present. Thank you. I'm going to give you a quick history summary on this property. Back in 2021, the Board of Commissioners approved a contract to sell 20 some odd acres of land that is owned jointly with the City of Covington to Newton Land Investments for $50,000 per acre. Since that time, the contract has been amended twice. The most recent amendment to the contract that this Board approved was in June of 2023 and the property to be sold has been shrunk down to the property shown on the screen above you, uh, in front of you. There is an 11 acre parcel that is on the, it's the parcel in, with the darker back outline that's shown roughly on the right side of the property. That property is under contract to be sold to Newton Land Investments for $50,000 per acre. That contract is coming up. And what I'm asking the board to do is authorize the chairman and myself to execute the documents necessary to close the sale. We need specific authorization to do that. Again, that sale will, will close in the imminent future, 
and we will simply be closing the contract that this board's already approved. And again, the purchase price for this was $50,000 per acre. We own it jointly with the city of Covington, so the way it'll work is we'll deed it to the city of Covington, city of Covington will sell it, we'll get half of the proceeds. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, sir. I seek a motion, please. I make a motion to approve the um, county attorney and the chairman to execute documents necessary to close this sale of property. Is there a second? Is there a second? Thank you. One more time. Is there a second? Oh. There's a motion by Commissioner Cowan and second by Commissioner <coughs> Mason. Any discussion? Commissioner Sanders? Patrick, can you remind us how many acres it is and what's the total cost that the county It's roughly 11 acres, 11.3 acres. And the total cost? At 50000 an acre times 11 acres, it's about $510,000. The county will get rough, will get half of that. Okay. Yeah. So the county's looking to get about $250,000 from the sale. Any more discussion? Oh, quick question. Commissioner Henderson. <clears throat> Once the property is sold, if anybody goes to general farm, I'm just for information purposes only, would it go to the general fund or what would it? That, that, yes, the funds that we receive will pay, be paid in the general fund will be subject to your budgetary authority. Thank you, sir. All in favor? Passes 5 0. Mr. Chair, we're at item number 17 authorization to enter into an IGA intergovernmental agreement with the City of Covington to authorize the conveyance to the City of Covington of Newton County's half interest um, of the 20, is it 213, Patrick? 213.847 acres adjacent to the eastern end of the runway at the Covington Municipal Airport to add to the airport layout plan submitted to the FAA. So on the aerial photo in front of you, you can see on the left side the Covington Municipal Airport. On the right side of Industrial Boulevard, you see a piece of property outlined in blue. That property is owned by the city of Covington. The property to the right of that is property that's, ha that's owned half interest the city of Covington and the county. Just to the north is the property that you just authorized the closing documents on. Um, if you would go to the next one, please. So on the very western edge of that property that's jointly owned by the city and the county, there's that four-sided kind of oddly shaped property that looks like a rectangle with the corner cut off. That property consists of 3.847 acres. That property is located within the airport's runway protection zone. The city of Covington has completed a relatively new airport layout plan which goes to the FAA for review and approval. And one of the FAA requirements is that the entirety of the, air, of the runway protection zone, which would include this 3.8 acres half owned by the county and the city, needs to be owned by the city of Covington so that it can be protected under the runway regulations. The city of Covington has requested that the county deed its half interest to the city so that the city can include that in their airport layout plan. That's the request before you. They have not offered to pay any money. They've asked that to be executed without payment. And I would note that the property probably has no realistic use. When, you, when you're located within the runway protection zone, there's some pretty significant limitations on things you can lawfully do with the property under FAA regulations. And essentially, you couldn't build anything of any significant use because you're within the area protected by the air airport. And to give you a little scale or a little uh, understanding where the property is, immediately to the southeast, sort of bottom right, is the Newton County Jail, just in case you're confused about where we are. I seek a motion, please. I make a motion to approve the county deed as half interest in that property to the city of Covington. Is there a second? Then motion by Commissioner Cowell and second by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, the question that, that I have, is, is I was thinking that it was my understanding that they'll 
they're wanting to make the uh, runway uh, longer so they can land bigger planes. That, uh, that was part of their airport layout plan revision that requires this additional runway protection zone. So I don't know the status of their efforts to extend their runway, but that the, the new airport layout plan would require that property right. to be. Right. So the only thing, what I was thinking, I think, I'm, gonna let, uh, I'm not gonna let Ms. Commissioner Sanders, she ever come in. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Commissioner Sanders. I just had a question in regards to us, I guess maybe donating the property over to the city of Covington because I, I, there's gonna be taxes that's gonna be collected off of that property, am I correct? No, the property currently is not taxed because it's owned by the government. And when you deed it to Covington, it will remain not taxed. Property owned by the government, does you don't pay, you don't pay property taxes to yourself. So not to ourselves, I'm talking about there's gonna be some profit to the city of Covington with us donating that property. No, they're gonna hold the property. They are not gonna sell that property. They are gonna to continue to own the property. It will simply be owned by the Air by the city subject to not being put to productive use because of the runway protection. But the airport is paying taxes to the city, am I correct? No, the, no? Not, not property taxes. So the, the airport is owned by the city of Covington? The airport is a governmental okay. entity. That's what I was likewise. trying to get a complete right. understanding. There's, there's no real estate property taxes accruing from that. Gotcha. So, so it's a wash as far as property taxes go. Okay, thank you so much for the clarity. All in favor? It passes by vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is item number 18, citizen comments. This opportunity we allow citizens to make comments. You have three minutes to do so. Please state your name, your address for the record, please. Good evening, my name is Wendy Lowe. I live at 35 Highwood Drive, Covington, Georgia. October 31st, I woke up, October 30th, I woke up and God put on my heart to come and talk to you about the closing of the Nelson Height Parks. Park. As a mother, I do not understand why you would deny children a park access to a park. I, live, I lived in District 3 for 16 years and I took my three children to Parker Road Park and to Pine Log Park because there's no park for them to play on the west side. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's sad my oldest son is 23, my twins are 20, and there's still no park there. And I think that the only thing worse than not having a park is actually having a park for kids to play and you have it locked. That just makes sen no sense to me. Where do you expect these children to play? In the street? That's definitely not a safe place for them to play. It was closed during their fall break. Now the holidays coming up. Where are these kids going to play? With the ARPA funds, the consultant kept saying that the people that live in the census tracts were going to have access to the funds first. The federal government wanted funds to go to these neighborhoods to improve the quality of life for the citizens in the community. Let's Move was a comprehensive initiative launched by First Lady Michelle Obama dedicated to solving the problem of obesity within a generation so that children born today could grow up healthier and be able to pursue their dreams. We all know that in order to be healthy, a person needs to eat a good diet as well as have exercise. Why did you lock up the park where the children run and play and get exercise? I believe that if you have a heart for children, you would correct this situation ASAP. What happened that you had to have a special meeting and close the park? Surely, if there was a legal issue, like there was a lease that was ending or something, you would have known about that ahead of time and would have done, made, made provisions for that. Parks and recreation buildings owned by the, city, uh, by the county should be operated by the county. The Parks and Recreation Department should take over that park, ASAP, and get it opened. The holidays are coming up, and the children are gonna be out of school, and they need a place to run and play um, instead of being in the streets. When the city manager asked for $10 million, one week, you turned it down. Next week he came, two weeks later he came and, and asked for five million and you approved it. So I know that when you are in favor of something, you can change your mind. So I ask for you to reconsider opening this park. If you're not gonna open up this park, then you should close all Newton County parks because all children should have the same right to play. 
and it's not fair for you to close parks in one area of town and not in the other. And these are, this, this park is in the census tract. And these people are already oppressed and you're just oppressing them more by allowing their children not to have a place to play and that's not fair. Thank you. Anyone else? Good afternoon, Archie Shepard, 9169 Village Drive, Cuffland, Georgia. My question is to the, uh, Mr. Cooper, did you check with the uh, district attorney when you fired those firemen? If not, uh, the district attorney told us when we went to him about Chairman Bain doing uh, business with the county with them dump trucks, he said until the, uh, they changed the code of ethics, it wasn't nothing could be did because he was doing a service and he deserved to get paid for the service. Now, my question is, if those, uh, the man at the scuba store, if he, was, if he was doing business with the county, he was doing a service. He deserved to get paid. So what I think is going to happen, I think y'all going to have another bunch of lawsuits and uh, just look out because those people have a right. They have the same right as he do. If, if the codes of X wasn't, wasn't broke for him, it's not broke for them. And uh, I, I probably look for another threat from your attorney. Mr. Chairman, she, she threatened to sue me, so I guess after the night she probably send me something else to threaten to sue me again. Anyone else? Good evening. I'm Matt Crow, 843 Cornish Mountain Road, Oxford, Georgia. I wasn't able to attend the last board meeting, but I was able to watch the video last night when I got back into town. And there seemed to be more answers raised or, or, or asked than there were answers. So let me see if I can help a little bit. Commissioner Sanders, you said we have to develop or the state will step in and mandate housing. I talked to the Georgia Department of Community Affairs who told me the odds of the state mandating housing in Newton County is virtually non-existent. With the existing housing and upcoming housing, the state would not intervene. You said no one was there arguing for the west side. This is false. I was. I was there in the early 2000s when the silos were being, and other developments were being brought before the board, and I stood up alone and spoke out against cramming four houses on an acre of land. I said, you cannot do that to the west side of the county. I said, the landowner has every right to sell his land, but not at the expense of his neighbor or his community. Do you know who stood up and stated what the county wanted, stated that the county wanted all of this development on the west side? Look beside you, it was Commissioner Henderson. He was the driving force behind it. You said happy meeting him and talked about inflation. Interest rates are very high now to drive down the demand and lower house prices. I agree, housing prices do need to come down. The happy medium comes when we slow down and let things take their course. Course. That's why the Fed raised interest rates to make housing more affordable in the future. Commissioner Mason, you said you have people in favor of this project. Yes, the people who will sell the land, the developers, and the builders, all at the expense of the people in that district. These developers are not even from here. I talk to people every day from all sides of the county, and no one wants more traffic, more lines at the grocery store, or more people. You said, where, the where were the community residents not speaking up when the west side was overbuilt? At that time, no one in the county knew what was about to happen. I was the only one that showed up. So it wasn't until the west side got overcrowded that the rest of the county realized, we don't want that. Um, you moved here from the north side of Atlanta. I assumed to get away from the hustle and bustle of the big city. But now you want to bring that same traffic congestion here you want to turn Newton County into the very thing you left. If I wanted to live in Atlanta, I would move to Atlanta. You said you heard two acre zoning was racially motivated. First of all, I'm disappointed um, that that was brought up. Um, and I'm not going to go any further on that. Let's not even go there. I just want to you know my, how I feel about that. You said Newton County is an amazing county. I agree. I asked why do you want to change it by adding thousands of new residents all at one time? I have lived here going on 60 years and was born right here at the hospital in Covington. I welcome all people to my community. You voluntarily chose to live in a house on an already built up side of the county. That was your choice. I chose to live in a rural setting my whole life and I'm not trying to change anything in your district. 
Thank you, Could sir. Could you extend me the same courtesy? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My Good name evening. is Alfonso Henley, 55 Riverbrook Trail. I'd like to formally introduce myself. I am an autodidactic intelligencer. I have an incredible mind, but it's not being used properly. People fear me <laughs> from the Vatican to the White House. I am known, and that is serious. I can give a lot to people. As a matter of fact, all of us are born with what we are here to do, our purpose. And it's the first mark that God gives us on our right hand. It's the mark. My mark is the mark of the intelligencer, a philosopher, a teacher. It's all I do. It's the best I can do. But because I'm autodidactic, I don't require a master. All my life, I take tests and pass, even without. But because it's the intelligence of God, I'd like to share what I have with this county. This is where I live now. This is where I plan to live. And I'd like to share what I have with you and the community. I'm for the children, 100%. There are, every 40 seconds, a child comes up missing in the United States. That's 70,000 a month, 840,000 children a year disappear in the United States. And that's because they don't have anything to do except watch violent video games, watch violent on television, and react to what they see. Now, if those community centers were open, people like me can be inside of those communities directing young minds to be intelligent rather than just merely educated not knocking education, because I also have that. But they need another level. We need to open up those community centers and get something in there for those children to do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? My name is Denise Williams. I'm a resident of Newton County. This is to our new county uh, manager because you wasn't on board before this incident occurred, but you were the one that was handling the um, fire chief situation. Um, I just gave a document to Ms. Latanja for you to um, view, but Chairman Baines has been doing business with the county as well. So the same decision that you made for the fire chief and the investigator, it need to be investigated, uh, investigation on him as well. And not only an uh, investigation, but y'all put him on paid leave for 10 days. So you can't, you can't chastise one and don't chastise all because he has proven document from y'all county attorney that he did business with the county. So investigate that. Anyone else? Good evening. Frederick Johnson, 1036 Highway 162, Trevington. Um, just got a, I think it was 2002, uh, this board voted to realign Moat Road to 162. We still need that done. We, at our church, Traffic is so bad that uh, it takes forever to get out of the churchyard and everything. So y'all might want to, you know, take a look at that. Another thing, um, uh, this Saturday at 11 o'clock, American Legion Post 32 will be observing the Veterans Day on the square. So if you got time, come out and, and be a part of it. Uh, thank you for the Paul, 
that's going on there in the Spring Hill area. Uh, I was up there last week. They had hit a lot of rock and everything, which I knew they was going to do that, you know, but I'm sure they'll be able to get it taken care of. But anyway, y'all just continue to do, do the people's will. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? <coughs> Commissioner Cowan. Everything? Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. C. And um, uh, this is to you, Mr. Chairman. If I'm going to accuse somebody of saying I did something on, on a certain date, I think I would have my information so that I could show that person something that he did maybe 20 years ago. But nevertheless, we've had three kids, three kids being killed over the housing project. I know two of them. One of them was my cousin. The other, the other one who died this week, this year, just this year, and nobody's saying nothing about it. They <laughs> caught there in what area? In the underserved areas of Newton County. Nobody care. I care. Not even the people who grew up in this community care. I care. Because they was good, good kids. I know, I know DJ personally. I know them. I know them. Our children deserve better. Board of Commissioners, you can run around and talk about me and say, well, we're going to change this, or we don't like what you say, but at least I'm trying to do something and y'all doing nothing. And to rebrand the name in Nelson Heights, not only are you not doing anything up there, you want to change the name. I guess we want another Boys and Girls Club. Boys and Girls Club, these children need help. Ms. Cooper, you talked to me and said, I, where I came from, this is what you told me, where I came from, we went out and we helped the children in the community, made something a little bit better. And yet we do nothing. Trunk, trunk or treat, two hours, well, maybe two hours and a half, and then put the kids out and lock the gate. Is this what we do here in, in New County? We deserve better. We deserve better. Thank you. Commissioner Sanders. This weekend, I had the opportunity to go to Augusta to attend the ACCG policy meeting. Um, other than myself and my colleague in District 2, we do attend those meetings, but I encourage my colleagues to attend those policy meetings because there's a lot of information and a lot of laws that are be coming down to the pipeline of the counties that's going to affect us. And if we're constantly still, I say this all the time, still sitting in Newton County and not knowing what's going on, it's going to hit us in our face. So it's better to go to these meetings and get in front of the narrative versus sitting and waiting for it to occur. Um, to also have a voice in what's occurring because ACCG is our lobbyist and they ask us, what do we want to see on the county level? So if we're not there representing Newton County or not even being a part of it knowing what's going on, then guess what? We're not a voice from, for the community. Um, when I actually were speaking, and one of the topics was in regards to uh, affordable housing, workforce development. And they used Newton County as an example because we had a discussion in regards to that. And we spoke on $300,000 homes because we've seen a lot of developments come before us that the house is going to cost $300,000. I want to give you uh, a figure. And they actually did this for me, so I'm, I didn't have to do the work. So David Wills, who was ACCG, said, well, a house that costs $300,000 in a county that's uh, with an average of, of rate of $55,000 for those for salary, that's 8.2% in the average of interest rate. That mortgage is going to be $2,253 a month. Now, you tell me who in Newton County can afford that, and the average salary of Newton County is $55,000. District 3 is in the 60s, but $55,000. So when I mention affordable housing and workforce development, that's what I'm, t I'm speaking of. Because your teacher, your law enforcement agency, your essential worker cannot afford $2,200 a month. Some of us on this board can't afford $2,200 a month. So that's what I'm speaking of. So one of the things when we do bring development, we need to look at that rate in regards to that. So also looking at our ARPA funds, we definitely need to get that transparency. I'm hearing too many stories 
Um, thank you, Mr. County Manager, for your update, but I'm hearing a lot of stories in regards to that, so we definitely need to update that. In regards to blasting in the community, I don't know what we're gonna do in District 3, as we know, on the west side, period. The houses are close together. So when you have the new subdivisions that are being built, there's constant blasting, and we're not informing our residents on when that blasting is occurring, and it's affecting a lot of the residents' homes. It's messing with their foundation. Items are actually falling off the wall and breaking, so we need to figure out what we're gonna do. If we're building these subdivisions in areas, we have to inform our residents of what's occurring so they know what's happening in regards to that. It's really important. My last statement, I'm gonna say this and I'll probably say it again. I don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Democrat, or Republican. Right is right and wrong is wrong. I'ma speak on it if you're black, I'ma speak on it if you're white. Right is right and wrong is wrong. If something is not done correctly, it is my job sitting here. I took an oath, and if it's not right, I'm gonna speak on it. It's not a personal vendetta against you. I was put in this place to do a job, and I'm going to do it. So don't get upset with me if we have a conversation, and you probably say, we're friends, we're cool. No, right is right, is wrong is wrong. If you go to me in this office to do a job, I am going to do it no matter what your position is, no matter what you look like, no matter your political area or figure, who you are. Right is right, and wrong is wrong. Thank you. Commissioner Mason. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. Hey, uh, as we approach the holiday season, I'll call it the Christmas season, um, I, I would encourage our citizens, this is the time of year I, I try to reflect, I would encourage our citizens to uh, uh, connect with your churches, connect with your civic, civic, civic organizations, uh, programs like Washington Street Community Center, uh, DFACs, we saw DFACs here tonight, and even private individuals or private businesses um, that are reaching out and, and to, to areas of need in our community, um, food, um, uh, the food, clothing, and shelter, um, jackets, coats. I saw, a, uh, I saw a, uh, a, an organization the other day that was working to get, I believe I got an email on it, Working to get coats for kids that don't have um, that, that don't have those, and for the for the cooler weather. My mother, I know my mother always when she went to pick my kids up at school when they were younger, um, it just broke her heart to see kids on cold days without jackets. And she even she even bought some of those jackets for what she could afford anyway. So, I would encourage our citizens, all our citizens, to get involved with one of these organizations, especially as it, as we move into the holiday season. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. I seek a motion that we adjourn, please. It's a motion by Commissioner Henderson and second by Commissioner Edwards. All in favor. Stand adjourned.